Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Ms. Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about solve by factoring word problems. In this particular word problem, we're going to end up with a quadratic equation that we're going to have to factor to find the answer. In this video, I'm specifically going to be using the divide and slide strategy to solve this problem. The length of a rectangular pool is three feet more than twice the width. The area of the pool is 65 feet squared. Find the length and width. And then I've added just a helpful reminder that whenever we have a rectangle, if we want to find the area of a rectangle, it's always length times width. So we'll use that information in just a moment. Now the first thing you would want to do if you saw this word problem is stop and actually draw a rectangular pool. I've already got one here but most likely they're probably not gonna give you a picture to start with, so you wanna draw your own. Let's break down this first sentence. The length of a rectangular pool, so length would be this distance right here, so our length is three feet more than twice the width. Anytime we deal with problems like this, I always try to think, which side do we know nothing about? And if we read this sentence, we know a lot about the length. It says the length is three feet more than twice the width, but we don't know anything about the actual width. We're just going to call it W for width. Now let's think about the length. It says the length is three feet more than twice the width. Let's just focus on that twice the width. So if we're going to twice something, that means we're going to times by two. So we're going to take the width and we're going to double it. We're going to times it by two. So two W. But then it says it's three feet more than twice the width. Well, more than indicates addition. So that means we're going to take our twice the width and we're going to add three to it. So three feet more than twice the width. So now that we have our sides labeled, we have our width labeled and our length labeled, they say that the area of the pool is 65 feet squared. And if we want to find the length and width, we have to set up an equation using this knowledge that the area of the rectangle is length times width. Now for this particular problem, I'm going to switch this around and do width times length. And the only reason I'm doing that is I see that the width is a monomial. It's just a one term. I know that'll be easier to distribute. It's just personal preference. We're going to take the width and we're going to multiply it by the length, 2w plus 3. And we know that that will equal the area of the rectangle, which it has told us is 65. So now we actually want to solve this problem for w, because once we know w, we'll know the width, and then we can easily find the length. But first we got to solve for w. To solve this equation, we would want to distribute this w into the parentheses. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to multiply the w in. Now w times 2w is 2w squared. And that goes into our laws of exponents, that this is a w to the power of 1 and a w to the power of 1. And when we multiply, we add them. OK, let's multiply our second part. So w times positive 3. That would be a positive 3w. And then we've got our equals 65. So now at this point, notice that we have a quadratic. And what I mean by quadratic is our highest exponent in this problem is a 2. And the highest exponent of 2 is a quadratic. So how do we solve quadratics? We do something called factoring. Now before we factor, it's very important that we have our quadratic in something called standard form. And just as a side note, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c 
equals zero. That's called standard form. The key part for this problem, I've already got my ax squared. In this case, we got w squared, but that doesn't matter. The fact that that's x and that's w doesn't matter at all. But this says equals zero, and I do not have an equal zero here. I've got an equal 65. So I need to get this to look like this. I need an equals zero. So how can I do that? Well, I need to move this 65 over to the other side. I'm going to do that by subtracting it because that's the opposite of a positive, which is what that 65 is right now. 65 minus 65 cancels to zero. But I can't just get rid of the 65 on this side. I've got to move it to the other side. So I also need to subtract 65 on the other side. Now, the temptation is to say, okay, well, what's 3w minus 65? We can't do that. Those are not like terms. And then I can't subtract 65 from the 2w squared either, because those are not like terms. So here's what we do. We just rewrite the problem, 2w squared plus 3w minus 65. We're just tacking it onto the end equals, and then remember we canceled those, so we got zero. This is in standard form, and we can factor it. As I specifically mentioned at the beginning of the video, for this problem I'm going to be using the divide and slide method to factor this quadratic equation. So my first step for the divide and slide method is to label my a, b, and c value. So remember, a is the coefficient in front of x squared. So in this case, that would be 2 for w squared. b is the coefficient in front of the just plain x. So in that case, this would be a positive 3. And c is the constant. It doesn't have a letter or variable with it. So in this case, that's our negative 65 is going to be our c. So now we can go ahead and build our x. So remember that in the top of our x goes our a times c, which in this case would be 2 times negative 65. That's going to give us negative 130. And then in the bottom goes our b value, which in this case is a positive 3. We do want to take note that our a value is not 1. And when a is not 1 with our divide and slide method, we've got to do a couple extra steps. So what I like to do is circle that a value if it's not 1. It's just a good reminder of the extra steps that I need to complete. Let's think about what our signs would be. We're trying to figure out these two values. And these two values multiply to give me negative 130. And they add to give me 3. So let's just think about the signs. I'm multiplying and getting a negative, but I'm adding and getting a positive. The only way I can multiply and get a negative is to have a negative number and a positive number, right? That's the only way. It doesn't even really matter what my sign in the bottom is. If I've got a negative up top, I know immediately I've got a negative and a positive number. Now, as far as what those two numbers should be, our calculator is definitely very helpful here. I'm going to show you a trick to quickly figure out what these two values should be. What we're going to do is go to our y equals, and we're going to type in that top number, 130. You could also type in negative 130, totally your preference. I like to just keep it positive because it doesn't really change my multiplication factors. I already know one's a negative and one's a positive. I typed in 130 divided by x. My next step is to hit second graph. That's going to bring up a table of values. And what this table of values is, is all the factors of 130. Now, I only care about the whole numbers, right? The, I see some decimals, but I don't care about those. I only want whole numbers. So we've got 1 times 130. We've got 2 times 65. We've got 5 times 26, right? Now remember, I'm looking for two numbers, knowing one's negative, one's positive, that will add and give me three. Now when I think about it, using logic, one and 130, there's no way those are going to add and give me three. No matter what, that just doesn't make sense. So let's think about my next one. Two and 65, no way. 
We need some numbers that are a lot closer together. 5 and 26, well, we're getting closer, but not quite close enough. Okay, what about 10 and 13? That sounds like it might be the answer. And if you wanted to just keep looking to check, notice now we see 13 and 10. The same values just flipped. So now you know you've seen it all. Now, one's got to be negative and one's got to be positive. You could always just try both. Try making the 10 negative and the 13 positive. And that's exactly what we need. If you had tried the opposite, negative 13 plus 10, you would get a negative, which is not what we needed. We know our numbers are negative 10 and positive 13. Now that we know our two values, we're ready to build our parentheses sets. So what we do is in our first parenthesis, we take our letter, which in this case is W, and we're going to use this first number we found, negative 10. So W minus 10. Now in our second parenthesis set, we're going to take our W again. And this time we're going to do plus 13 equals 0. We don't want to leave that behind. Now for our divide and slide method, I kind of think of it more like divide or slide, because we're going to do one or the other, but I'll show you what I mean. What we do is we take this circled number, and that's why I circled it, so that I would remember once I got to this step. We take this circled A value of 2, and we divide by 2 here and here. If we can divide this fraction right here and get a whole number, then we want to do that. If we can't get a whole number, then we're going to slide. So let me show you what I mean. For this first parenthesis, negative 10 divided by 2. Can we divide and get a whole number? Yes, negative 5. Negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. So we could easily divide for that one. And now we just have w minus 5. But for this second parenthesis, what about 13 divided by 2? Can I divide that and get a whole number? And if you're not quite sure, we could always check. Bring out your calculator and try it. 13 divided by 2. And I see that we get a decimal, not a whole number. What that tells me is we need to slide here. So what we do is we take that 2. We couldn't divide, so we slide. And we're going to slide it right to the front of this parenthesis. So we end up with 2w. And then the plus 13 stays the same, equals 0. Now for our final steps, we're going to take each of these parentheses sets, set them equal to 0, and solve. I'm going to do that right over here on the side. So we've got w minus 5 equals 0. And we've got 2w plus 13 equals 0. Now to solve this first equation, I would just want to add 5 on both sides. And I get w equals 0 plus 5 is a positive 5. For this second problem, I would want to subtract 13. And I get 2w equals 0 minus 13 is negative 13. My final step to get w alone is to divide by 2 on both sides. So I get w equals negative 13 over 2. Or you could give the decimal of negative 6.5. Either way. Okay, so now it's kind of weird, right? Because we have two answers for w, when really we only are going to have one answer for w. Does it make sense that we could have a negative measurement? I mean, think about this. This is a rectangular pool. Could we say this side is negative 13 over 2, or negative 6.5 feet. No, that wouldn't make sense. We, we don't measure in negatives. So we can actually throw this answer away because it doesn't make sense for the context of our problem. But the w equals 5, now that makes sense. So that's going to be our width. So our width is 5 feet. We can go ahead and write that here. Width is 5 feet. But we don't just want to know the width, right? We also want to know the length, because they said find length and width. But once we know the width, 
w was 5, then we can just easily plug it into our length. So this was 2 times w plus 3. So now we're just going to make it 2 times 5 plus 3. Well, 2 times 5 is 10, and then plus 3 is 13. So our length is 13 feet. Thanks for watching. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.